They're all netted. Just uh, kill them off with tech, was there? Oh boy. And they can't get away. <laughs> it's a massacre. <laughs> oh, it's, that was just ridiculous. <laughs> the combo there at the end. Nine losses, <laughs> 2,523 kills. That was really nice. That's lower than Sea Guard. They got 294 kills. What the hell? Imagine if you had like an entire army of lower than Sea Guard. That'd be mental. Like instead of archers, you just got loads of Lothan Sea Guard. Not only can they defend themselves in melee, but they can also just kill everything. Another victory. It would be really good. And I probably would do it if it didn't cost so much in terms of upkeep. Shackle them. Alright, well that's done. I don't think Let we need go. the replenishment. So we'll probably just take the extra experience. Free the captives. Death has come for them. Mm -hmm. I think the unit replenishment's just nice at this point. Because then I can just walk up and kill the, uh, the way. chaos over here. Off I go. Okay. I uh, Edithane can come out and kill off those Skaven. Let's rid of the in intervention force. And we'll just fast move him probably towards the Golden Colossus now. Though he needs to recruit some more troops, doesn't he? Get the stone walls at the Sentinels of Zeti anyway. And with Erdithine, we'll give him a horse now. Right, well... Aramir, I was hoping to find the army that was here, but considering I can't, I'm just going to go to Quetzal. And here it is. Okay. So. Let's, uh, I think, quick save this and fight it on the battle map. There is a couple of Plague Claw catapults we're going to have to deal with. Let's have a look at the uh, terrain, though. Hmm. Could be a little bit difficult. In terms of their infantry versus mine, we're fine. And I've got loads of these archers. And look at that missile damage. <laughs> 42 missile damage on those archers. It's so buffed right now. It's ridiculous. I'm going to have to rely on these Illyrian Reavers getting around the back and taking out the Plague Claw Catapults. The Asur follows strength. We will quick save this and uh, we'll fight this one on the battle map. I will lead the Asur. Mitty says still to resolve it, but nah, we're going to play it out. I think like see the uh, battles where you're facing like full stacks are definitely worth playing out most of the time. Yes, I will lose more men, but at the same time, I'll probably just get the replenishment after the battle anyway. So I don't know, we'll be all right. I might use this left side anyway. There is this in the middle of the map as well. Not sure how helpful that's going to be, but yeah, we'll, we'll come over to this left side. And um, I think they do have the advantage, so they're not going to push to us. I might just start a little bit further back anyway. Oh yeah, we also have uh, Aramir. He can go balls deep into the enemy lines and take out the catapult for us. So let's gamble for more wins. And we will start the deployment and start the battle. Okay, cool. So if they do move towards me, then great. If they don't, then fine. I mean, it doesn't really matter.
I'm just going to have Aramir fly over here. Just to see if I can bait the uh, catapults into firing at him. If they aren't going to, I might just run my forces towards them while they're distracted. Because um, they're all busy, like, reforming at the moment, I think. There is a swamp there as well that they're moving through, so... That's something. Right, are they going to fire at me or not? Aramir is just chilling here. Oh, there's a fireball coming in. Dodge the fireball, Aramir! Oh. Took off some tail feathers, that did. I really want to come down and attack them, but... I'm also very wary that I don't want to... Oh. Another spell coming down for Aramir. <laughs> So they are now firing with like claw catapults. Means I'm gonna get down in there, down and dirty. Stop them from firing, hopefully. Oh, we need to get Aramir out of there. gonna have to line up our forces now. I will heal up that unit that got wrecked. We'll go for Arcane Conduit as well. And we're gonna have to just get out of here. Right away. I think we stopped the play Claw Cast Bolts from firing, so that's okay. One army. Get on out. Kind of a bit messed up because of this, these trees here, but yeah, it should be okay. Gonna get back onto these play core catapults now. May as well charge down into those clan rats. Do some more damage there. May as well keep cycle charging them. Oh, here comes another one of those attacks. Oh, so painful. And the other thing we can do is get one of our spells here, this Dwellers Below. Kill a lot of these rats. Right, we destroyed loads of clan rats there. That's good. Jeremy is on the ground, but he's being wrecked at the moment, so we're just going to have him move away. So I kind of want them to bunch up a bit more, but the Dwellers Below is very tempting. And they're all running at the moment. Yeah, we'll put it there. Alright, so we'll just look at this spell. Basically what happens is like the woods come alive and they start like brushing the Skaven in the area. It's cool. Alright, so we're being chased down here. Let's get the Skaven Slayers of Stingers killed. We'll come back into the Play Claw Cast Bolt stop it firing as well. I think our archers are doing okay though. I mean, their, their weapon damage is so insanely high that I think they just do so much damage. Okay, so we got a decent enough charge into the Skaven Slayers Stingers there, but we're being attacked by other Skaven Slayers Stingers, I think. There goes the uh, Eagle again. Alamir straight into the middle of the play call or catapult. So far, so good. So the amount of arrows flying about is just insane. Right, charge down into the Skaven Slave Spears. Watch this engagement. Nice. Good amount of damage. Damage them around quite effectively. 
Let's uh, maybe disengage and go for one more charge there. And here comes another spell. Aramir is just absolutely wrecking these guys. It's so funny. Just get out of there, put the enfeebling foe on just for now. Or the Tormentor Sword, even. Oh, those uh, Skaven Slaves of Spears. Routed. Okay, so let's just run them down with the Illyrian Reavers. I think we've done pretty well here. Coming in again. We just want to stop those guys from firing as much as we can. You could see like Aramir just like doing some work for his army. Fantastic. We're going to have a lot of kills on these archers again. <laughs> Look how little men are actually getting away. It's crazy. A really nice charge into the back of them there. We come down onto the play claw cast bolts one more time. an absolute massacre. I think we can probably just get the entire army to move up. I'm going to give you a Nidara. Some armor. And we're just going to go ham onto their leader there. But that is victory anyway. Nice. And with them uh, running across the open, I might just let my archers get a few more kills. Just watch these units disintegrate as I speed it up. It's not even fair. <laughs> Alright, we'll end it there. Close victory. Two hundred eighty losses. 348 kills for our Illyrian Reavers. I think it'd be pretty awesome. I'm not entirely sure if it does, but like if it keeps a kill count of like certain units. The Asur have conquered. 4,600 loot gained. I think we sack it, Sacked. don't we? The yeah. And then we can just take it. Starting out. Ready to serve. Nice. All right, so we're gonna suffer a little bit because of that, but it's fine. We're just gonna have Aramir hanging about this province anyway, because we want to defend Itza. And with that army destroyed, I don't think there's much chance of them coming along anytime soon anyway. And we're going to get the Ithilma Chariot now for Elin Yadara. Should help us out quite nicely. Eldarian. Have him hang out near Great Turtle Isles. Get us some extra income. We're sitting on 35,000 cash now. 35,000. We can definitely afford to recruit some men into Erdothane's army. And I think that's what we're going to do. I might quickly have him travel over to the Mud Isles to do that. Like with this fast move, we'll just go across, pick up this treasure, go into the Mud Isles, and then recruit some troops there, come back to the Sentinel of Zeti, get ourselves a couple of Phoenixes, and uh, continue. 
Right, I'm really enjoying this, so I'm going to continue for now. I love this campaign, it's great. <laughs> we'll end the turn there, I think that's everything done. Five more turns until our ritual is complete. We already dealt with the Skaven... ...intervention. So that's one thing done. Speed up Lothurn. We should probably check out what Nagaron's doing. Just in case they are moving some armies towards us. We definitely want to know what Clan Moors are doing. Although, as you can see, we've significantly weakened them. Um, their balance bar was, like, way over. It was so big. But now it's not so big at all. I think mainly because they're at war on so many fronts. Yeah, they're being attacked by high elves all over the place. Oh, look at that. Some high elves going for the Bretonians. Not really Bretonians, but same models, so that's what I'm going to call them. Oh yeah, now we're at war with uh, Clan Moors, actually. I may as well get as many people as I can to declare war on them. We don't want a military alliance. We will have a non-aggression pact with them for now. Well, even that isn't really worth it. No. Yeah, I don't know. We're probably worth just, like, destroying those dwarves, honestly. They're in a really weak position now. And those provinces they have in the... Mountains there are actually worth quite a lot. Yeah, leave them be, which gives us extra 10 growth in all provinces. Happy populace, plus 5, public order. I think we're going to do that. M minus 4 influence for public order per turn. That's quite nice. What's going on here? You can quickly destroy those chaps, I think. Elfry! By Golgast of Valtide. Withdraw. Ooh. I think on the Back. sea. That's Tests. not really worth doing. Interesting. Ashore, inspecting the garrison. Didn't want to lose too many men there, so just decided to back off. Anamir needs to level up again. He's leveling up very quickly. We already have favourable wins, don't we? And all of our archers are now rank seven. So let's get uh, Stand Your Ground. It gives extra melee defense for units in range, which is nice. We'll go and take uh, Chakwa now. Journey. I think in one more turn, that should be enough to hit Chakwa. Order must be maintained. Lethal grace given form. And get on to seas here. Anchors away. Take a little bit of attrition, but Land we're okay. Horn. That gave us another 5,000 cash. I second this. And, well, in one turn, we can move all the way here and recruit some more horses. So we can get Sword Masters of Hoeth here. I'm just looking at my upkeep, like if it's worth it. I kind of want to get a Flame Spire Phoenix in this army. You can get three units of archers for like the cost of one Swordmaster of Hoeth. I think it would just be better off having more at the moment than, than like quality, like quantity over quality at the moment. 
We'll get a couple more spearmen. We'll get uh, some archers there as well. Okay, so that's going to give us 18 out of 20 units. Then what we can do is move back towards the Sentinels of Zeti. Pick up two phoenixes, maybe one of each. Then move towards Clan Moors down here. Destroy the Golden Colossus if they've taken it. Go destroy the Forgotten Isles and the Duskgate. We don't want any of these. Because they are uninhabitable. So we're just going to keep raising them. Well, Darian's just going to chill. Awaits. And uh, that's it. We'll end the turn there. <laughs> Schmitty says, Vulcan, you are causing inflation. Stop printing money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of money we've got at the moment, for sure. I barely have anything to spend it on as well. I think with Teclas here, if the Chaos Army attacks the Great Turtle Isle, we will destroy them and then go get that treasure that's literally just next to us. Also, I may as well go get that treasure and then move north to those islands and go and destroy the other settlements that are up there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mung's pretty much dead by the looks of things, which means the Dark Elves are doing relatively well. Copies of Chaos have come on land. And they are sieging the Great Turtle Isles. Go ahead and destroy them. Oh. Did I accidentally move on land there? I did. Get back on, on land. And... No, we won't do that attack. We need Teclas. <laughs> What's going on with this? Minus 4,000 income. The ritual of prophecy completed. Ritual of seafarer in progress. I think because they're sieging my capital, it's stopping the trade. I'm I'm guessing that's the only logical explanation for what's happening right now. Uh, but either way, let's get on to land here, and uh, we will recruit ourselves a couple of phoenixes. I think we'll go for two flame fire spire phoenixes. These only take two turns each. They're a little bit worse in terms of armor and pretty much everything. But the melee attacks a lot higher for the phoenixes, and they do have the uh, special attacks there, so that's cool. A little bit worried about this income. <laughs> no mercy. A strong we'll destroy this settlement. May as well sack it again and then just take it over. Good attacker. And income from sacking settlements. Cool. Yeah, I kind of messed up there a little bit with Teclas. That was silly. Oh well. We will end the turn. I think the only thing I'm worried about now is like them actually attacking the settlement. And me not being able to defend it because they have chosen, but we'll see. What's the difference between High Elves and Dark Elves? Asked Tweeboon. Battle or unit wise, which is better? I think Dark Elves, they rely a lot more on a wider variety of units and 
their kill count is quite important. Whereas with the high elves, you're stronger if you lose less men. So you you play a lot more defensively with the high elves, and you play much more aggressively with the dark elves. At least that's sort of how I play it, and how I think the armies are supposed to be played. So it's it's not necessarily that like one's more powerful than the other, um, like one's better than the other. I think it's just they are played differently. Alright, so Teclis is reinforcing, so that's fine, we'll just watch it resolve. I was worried that he wasn't, but apparently he is, so that's fine. Cool. Eastern Trade Contracts is complete, and our income has sorted itself out, thankfully. Elfry. Necklace leveled up. We may as well get him stand your ground. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good ability, actually. For Aramir, we will just occupy this settlement. After another fight. And on. And we will repair that, demolish the militia camp. And he actually leveled up, and he can get himself a sun dragon. Yes, indeed. That is awesome. Okay. Now we're talking. And Ilan Yadara. We can start buffing some of our spells, I think. We may as well get Cleanse Corruption as well. I think that's also a nice idea. We'll get, yeah, Cleanse Corruption. Because we're going to be dealing with a lot of Skaven Corruption for sure. Right, here at the Central Spine of Sotek. If I change this to, I'm going to say uh, the, the public order commandment, but we don't have it as the high elves. No, we'll, just, we'll just stay on banished corruption. You must restore order. Upgrade this to the enchanted walls. And we can upgrade the great turtle isle to the thriving elven colony. Nice. Give the word. ignore that. Research is available. Eastern trade contracts was complete, so let's go for income from settlements now, plus 10%. That's really good. And Schmitty says, you can invest the money in the stock market of High Elf, consisting of dead bodies murdered by Teclis via magic. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Can I offer assistance? <laughs> Right, let's see, we've got one turn until this is finished. Then we can go crush some more Skaven. Yeah, I think the uh, the kill count of Teclas is pretty damn high. I really wish, like, when you clicked on them, it told you their kill count, their total kill count. That'd be insane. Especially for Teclas, he must have killed thousands.
But he says I should message the devs about that idea. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, <laughs> I don't think the devs really care much about my channel when it comes to uh, Warhammer, unfortunately. But I might message their Twitter account, might DM them. Uh, as for this, what do we want? You can dance. We've read all of these before, I think, now. Minus 12 influence for public order for five turns. I think we'll do that again. And trait gain plus two public order for Alamir. Poets chosen. Let's crush Attack. these chaos. Now is not the time. Gone. Nice. Okay, so we are safe. We are the Let's grab Teclas and go, go grab in. that shipwreck over there. Behold. Iron Song, bonus experience, and treasury. Level 30 for Teclas. Beautiful. Where do we want to put this skill point? We currently have Roiling Skies, Metal Shifting, and Life Bloom. The other thing we can get is the actual weakness to fire damage, which directly works with the Flames of the Phoenix to make it do more damage. The extra tradable resources faction Y is pretty damn cool. What are these other ones? Immovable force, sexual weapon strength, melee defense for spearmen, silver helms, sword masters of Hoeth, and white lines of trace. As once I we expected. start to level up these spearmen a bit more, that would be a nice one to pick up. Oh, I probably should have. Got myself Moving off. the extra unit here while I was there. Apparently, only got 19 dudes. I hear the widow 1,300 income this turn with Erdathane recruiting his two phoenixes. Right, let's get our move on over here. Don't want to go into the attrition, so just going to stop short. We'll either search the Golden Colossus or destroy it if it's Skaven. Order must be maintained. Naramir one or two. I'd probably use the Woodman's Hut for another tradable resource. That would be very cool. Actually reduces the recruitment cost for Archer Spearmen, Lothan, Lothan Seaguard, and the Bolt Throwers. And with that, let's move towards Quitax. Oh, look at his dragon. How beast that is. Damn. Very cool. That's it. One more turn and the ritual is complete. We're well on our way to the next one as well. Um, the Nordhammer says, would you not be better off occupying and not sacking the cities at this point? Cities would be a bit more intact. They would, yes, but they would probably have buildings that I don't want anyway. And sacking gives me replenishment for the army, which allows it to continue quicker, which is the main reason I'm doing it. I don't really care about them being, like, de-leveled because I'm sacking them. I just, uh, I don't mind. We'll just build them back up. It's fine. It might be quicker to like not sack them and take them over, but it's such a like short term debuff doing that. It really hurts you over time. Pretty in the chat saying I forgot the followers, banners and weapons. Yes I did. Finabar the Seafarer, 
The reigning Phoenix King was called upon to reveal the second shard of the Star Crown. The wave fragments are cast so the tides move at the seafarer's command. The living king has done his part. Now it is time to evoke the royal spirits of old. Cool cinematic there. I really do like the cinematics in this game. Very, very cool. Opposing ritual started clan moors. Here we go, right. So, a couple of things I want to do before I end the High Elf campaign for today. We need to go to diplomacy. We need to start an intervention, and we need to do the followers. So I'll start with the followers. The Let's talk to uh, Eldarion, and uh, oh, we can give him a bard. That's really useful, actually. He's already got uh, the Vintner as well. Immune to attrition, the Lord's army. That is pretty damn good. I don't think we need the bard for Teclas, so giving him the immune to attrition would be really good. We don't need any armor, I don't think, or anything for this chap. I think the chance of spotting nearby armies is alright, though. What about Aramir? I guess he could use the extra public order for now. An Ilinidara? No, nothing there. So we used all the uh, followers of banners. For Ilinidara, though, we, we can definitely give her ar uh, armor. Um, and we should probably give it to Earthedane as well. So, Aramir's good. Let's do Earthedane first because he's the leader. Look at this Armor of the Stars. Target is hidden. Really? That's kind of cool, but I think that's worth giving to Ilan Yadara, actually. Glittering scales would be nice for the minus five melee attack, constant around self. That's really cool. And the Bane Shield, plus 30 armor and missile parry for himself. We're going to get glittering scales. We'll give him the Sword of Strife. The Talisman. Physical resistance probably the best. Or maybe even ward save. Actually the opal amulet's nice as well. Verifying mask of E is fine. So Ilin Yadara, the armor of the stars, makes her hidden. That's really, really cool. She doesn't need a weapon for now, so that's fine. And uh, I guess we will give her an opal amulet as well. We'll just have all of our units have opal amulets. Um, you just activate it when they get attacked. It's best ability. We can give her the fireball spell as well, which is cool. An arcane item. Gem of Sunfire causes magical and fire damage. Large moving area of effect, strong versus multiple units. That is very cool. Why can't she not choose it? Limited to equipping no more than three items that provide an ability. Okay, so let's change her Opal Amulet to just give her ward save. And then she can grab one of these. And we'll give her the Gem of Sunfire just so that she has, like, these extra spells that she can use. So she'll get Fireball and the Gem of Sunfire. Really, really cool. So she's going to be really strong. She's like a Fire Life Mage now. The other thing we want to do now is um, diplomacy, so making people attack clan moors, more specifically Valiant Knights of the Flame. Lord. The lady grants you safe passage in these lands. I will not. All right, we're going to have to obviously give them some money to do this, but it would be worth it, I think, for sure.
Um, payments, offer payment, or demand a payment like that, and then offer it. Never. Come on. I really don't get like when it's moderate and it doesn't let you like the threshold of like how much you need to pay them in order for them to join. I'm gonna offer them three thousand nine hundred. Is it worth more than that? I'm not sure it is. At your service. Hmm, this is a wood elf realm. This is Athel Lauren, home of the Oak of Age. No, just no. Unwise. Probably worth uh, increasing our relations with them. Well, that's done. Last thing we need to do is send a desperate intervention. Oh, so that's that done. And that's high quality, so should get the job done.